So the Shape Oko is a pretty rigid machine, all things considered. My friend Winston made a set of three aluminum longboards using just a stock Shape Oko. But in my experience, if you're going to be doing a lot of aluminum machining, it might not be a bad idea to start upgrading some of the parts. I have a pretty early version of the Z-axis, so it has a belt drive and V-wheels rather than linear rails and a ball screw. These days I think they're shipping with a lead screw and linear rails, which is fine for most people, but for me, who's going to be pushing this machine really hard, I figure if I have to replace the whole gantry, then I might as well get the better one and save myself the hassle of having to upgrade it again in the future. It's a little hard to get stuff across the border into Canada these days, so I use that as an excuse to just get everything in one go. I was going to get all these parts anyway, so it just made sense to send it in one package rather than try and piece it out over a couple months. I ended up getting an HDZ, two 65mm spindle mounts, and two bit setters. The new Z axis and the spindle mounts are just to really increase rigidity. That should allow me to take deeper and faster cuts. The bit setter is really just a time saver. To put it really simply, it just measures the tool length and then recalculates the zero position. Normally that's something you have to do manually and it takes more time than it sounds like it does. Sometimes I feel like I spend half my time machining just swapping out tools and re-zeroing. As a cost saving measure, the new Z axis reuses a couple of the old parts. Because I'm using the upgraded spindle mount, I only had to transfer my steppers over. With that being said, there's some pretty nice hardware in this axis, so I'm probably going to tear everything out of that later. I can't bring myself to just throw the whole thing in the trash. The HD parts are pretty solid chunks of metal. Normally, I don't really approve of the design philosophy where you just throw more aluminum at a problem until it's more rigid, but for a CNC machine where weight is your friend, I think this is a perfect solution. Of course, that's not to say that these parts are inelegant. I've gone over them pretty thoroughly, and there's lots of little design features that are really well thought through. Since the Z is getting upgraded from a belt to a ball screw, you have to remove the pulley. I cut out about 10 minutes of me struggling to get this pulley off, and I think what happened was a little bit of Loctite from the grub screws leaked down onto the shaft. The right solution here would have been something like a gear puller, but that's not exactly something I keep around. The kit includes all new hardware, things like bolts and bearings and spacers. It is a nice convenience to not have to rip all that stuff off the old machine. I'm sure I paid for that, but it did make it look nice and fresh and new. I really have a soft spot for building kits like this, just because it feels like Lego. I of course love designing and building my own kits, but this kind of big girl Lego really takes the stress out of a lot of things. Like I'm not worried about getting halfway through this build and then thinking, fuck I forgot to design one of these parts. I don't know, it's also kind of neat when your Lego can hold a 10,000 RPM spinning blade of death. Maybe that's just me, though. There were a small handful of instances where I strayed away from the instructions. One of those instances was installing the X-axis motor. They actually tell you that you have to install the X motor after you install it on the machine. Really, I just weighed the difficulty of reaching around the machine with an Allen key versus trying to thread the X belt through. I ended up being happy with my decision. It wasn't too hard to get the belt through, and I don't have much room to get behind the machine here. The kit came with an inductive end stop retrofit. I wasn't really paying attention when I bought it, and I didn't realize that it was going to be mandatory. It's not like the physical switches are better in any way, it's just that the whole retrofit was 
a lot more involved than I thought it was going to be. They're better, I just don't think they're two hours of redoing all of your drag chains better. I'm sure that would go faster if you weren't trying to film it and had it on a table as opposed to just sitting on your knees the whole time, but it still felt like a long time. The kit swaps over the end stop mounts from being a sandwich of sheet metal and spacers and bolts to a nice injection molded part with some heat set inserts in it. It's a cleaner system and rigidity doesn't matter because these end stops don't ever actually touch anything. All the bit setter really needs is to just be plugged in and screwed into place. And then you're ready to test all the upgrades out. I want to give a big thanks to my patrons. They, in one way or another, paid for all of these parts. When I say I wouldn't be able to do this kind of thing without you guys, I literally mean it. This machine isn't just a toy for me, it's a way to make a real living, and I really can't communicate how much that means to me. Things are probably going to get a little rough for me in the next coming months, so any support you can give would really make a huge difference.